All right, so uh, this is a user requested tutorial that's gonna be about filters on your map. So what are we talking about when we talk about filters? Well, let's look at our little example here. So basically we're talking about having a checklist or switches or whatever on the side of your map and toggling different things turns them off and on, okay? So this is something that seems very straightforward and a lot of clients ask for it, but it's actually complicated and there's a few different ways to do it that I'm gonna go over and hopefully give you some um, some helpful code. So we're going to be doing this on a map Libra map, but this could easily apply to Mapbox, Google Maps, Leaflet, etc. Because the mapping part isn't very complicated, it's mostly a JavaScript thing. And we're going to be doing this in jQuery, although I'll note a couple times when React may differ a little bit, since a lot of you may be making maps in React. So with all that out of the way, Let's get into what I'm talking about when I talk about inclusive and exclusive filters when it comes to this map. We'll want to understand this before we really get into it so that you know what we're talking about. So I've set up this map here to have markers as well as red dots underneath. So every one of these markers and circles have numerous categories on them. None of them have just one category. So exclusive means that when I turn off a single category that one of them has, it immediately disappears. So you can see here the markers immediately disappeared, but the red circles underneath didn't because those red circles require me to turn off every category in order for them to disappear. So I have to turn off schools, I have to turn off um, a specific region, and I have to turn off the region parent as well. So then they disappear. So you get the idea, the inclusive ones, you have to turn off all the categories. The exclusive ones, you just have to turn off one category, okay? So clients may be asking for one of these or another. Obviously, we also have nested categories going on, which has its own challenges. So, okay, now with all that out of the way, let's actually start jumping into the code. I've put the code all up here on a GitHub new repo that I'm going to put a lot of all my tutorial code up into, and I have it in a number of steps. So it should be easy for you to walk along and be able to uh, pick up the code wherever you want or just get the finished product. So let's jump into step one. So step one, all I did was just created the initial map, and I did that by just going to basic map, map Libra, and this one, and I just grabbed this code and directly dumped it into an HTML doc. And then I wrote up some comments for myself, which I would really recommend you do when it comes to filtering because it can be a bit of a brain buster. So, um, and then we have our step one, let's just load it up, step one map, um, and we just have an empty map. Great, so now let's go to step two. Step two is where we're gonna define what I call the category key. And this is fairly important because this is kind of a representation in code of what we're going to have on the side with the menu and the checkboxes later on. So you might be getting these categories in a lot of different ways from an API, or you might only get a list of GeoJSONs and you have to make a category key, but you wanna have this because it just makes building things a lot easier, whether that's React or jQuery. So you can see here, I just have an array of objects that have an ID and a term. And if they have children, I also like child categories, then I have the child categories, which have the same format. So you can see here, it's fairly straightforward. I recommend doing something like this. Second, I made some sample data. I did this using geojson.io, and then I just added some, um, some data onto it. So we can see our sample data here. It's just a set of points. I've given an ID to each point and some categories which come in this format where I've just put a string, um, a comma separated string of categories, but you might get it in a lot of different formats. It might be as an array, it might be as different strings, uh, altogether it might be terms instead of IDs. You're gonna have to play with this a little depending what you're working with, but the, say, the principles will apply. Second, I grab this GeoJSON and I load it onto the map. And now I um, am going to be going over two ways that we're doing this uh, when it comes to Map Libra, because there's two quite different ways to deal with um, features on these types of maps. One is as markers and the other is as layers. So we have here this initial one where I add the markers and another one where we add it as a source and a layer, which is more particular to Map Libra slash Mapbox. One important thing to note when I do the markers is that I add this property to the markers 
um, dot saved properties and call this whatever you want where I save all the properties of that marker and that's just to help me later on you'll see so that it's easy for me to figure out which markers I'm going to hide and which I'm going to show then I save all the markers into an array which I've created at the very start and that's going to help later when I need to loop over them again to find which ones to hide and which ones to show one thing I didn't put in here that will appear later on is that I would also save the features for the, for the source and layer version, not the marker version, but for adding them like this, I'd save the features from the response also into an array very similar to the markers one. And we'll see that a little later. Um, you'll just notice it. So, okay, we, we've added our stuff to the map. Okay, so next we can go on to building the control. So going into the control, uh, you can see on the side here, I've added it. And these don't do anything yet. They're not even connected in the sense that clicking and unclicking a parent doesn't do anything and they don't do anything to the map okay so let's go into step three how did I add the control there's a number of ways you can do this you can just add it as a plain HTML element and then position it with Z index and margins and stuff but there is a kind of like more right way to do it although it's not really a big deal and that's called using the I control um, which you can find on the map Libre documentation or map box it's the same thing uh, and we basically create a class and there's some methods that are used to uh, to kind of organize one of these controls and then you can add and remove it using like the normal Mapbox syntax for uh, adding and removing controls. So you can put it map.addControl, da 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 da. So I'm going to do it this way. Feel free to do it another way if you prefer. I used to always do this with just plain HTML elements. I found it the easiest rather than doing this whole class thing. But I thought I'd try to be good in making this tutorial and do it right for you. So here in the onAd method, we give it a class and a custom class as well. So I can do a little styling. And then we're going to generate the HTML that uh, we're going to have here. So in order to generate that HTML, we get the first awesome use of our category key, which is we're just going to loop over the category key. And for each parent category, we're going to generate a checkbox. And for each child category, we're going to generate a checkbox. Great. Awesome. And we give them each a, a class so that we'll be able to tell later because we're using jQuery when that when a change happens on that input. And importantly here, I give these a couple data attributes. One, I give them the ID of that category from the category key. And second, I tell them if they have a parent or not and what the parent ID is. If they have no parent, I give them a parent of zero. And if they have a parent, I tell, I give the data attribute of that parent's ID. So this way, when we click a child category, We'll be able to not only get that child's category ID, but also its parent's category ID. Um, and that's very important. So in React, you wouldn't be doing this with data attributes. You would pass this information into your on change event handler, where you would pass in that category's ID, its parent ID, and also if it's checked or not, because that's the third thing we're going to have to know if the, if the checkbox is actively checked. So you're going to have to pass those in, um, in, in, in a React form, which feel free to uh, leave a comment and I'll get, drop a bit of sample code if you're not sure how to do that in React. So from here, uh, yeah, that's our step three. Again, we didn't actually add any specific interactivity here. So let's go on to step four, where we start adding a little bit of interactivity to our checkboxes. So here we can see that we've now created this relationship between the child checkboxes and the parent checkboxes when they're turned off and on. So how I tend to do this, my standard understanding of how this should work, is that when um, all of the ch children are turned off, the parent is automatically turned off. And when the parent is turned on, all the children are turned on. So turn off the parent, they all turn off. So you get the idea of how I'm kind of constructing this. Um, and if one parent, one child gets turned on, the parent gets turned on. So I need to do a little bit of logic to make this happen. Uh, again, not every client's going to do this the same way, but I think that's the intuitive way to do things. So to do this, oh, one little thing also at the top, you can see the little bit of styles I've added just to give this padding and, and a white background, pretty minor stuff. So here I now have added an on change event listener, which uh, is pretty standard to do. And when uh, I get a change, so whenever there's a click on one of these checkboxes, I get the ID. Um, of that category from getting the data attribute. 
I get the parent ID, and I get whether it's checked or not, which is the three pieces of information I chatted about a moment ago. Then I do a little bit of logic. I'm not going to walk over it super, super closely because this stuff gets hard to talk about and it's easier to look at. But basically I check if this is a parent category, then make all its children have the same state that it has. So if the parent got turned off, turn off all the children. If it turn, got turned on, turn on all the children. If it's not a parent ca um, category, if it's a child, then I have to do some of that check if the other ones are checked or check if the other ones are unchecked and then change the parent accordingly. You can kind of walk through that logic yourself in there, but that's basically what's going on uh, in, this, in this other example. So that lets us create this relationship going on. And the reason that we're doing all this before we start actually hiding and showing things on the map is that in the next example, the way I prefer to attack this is I change all the checkboxes first and then I check them all. And in one swoop, I check which are on and which are off so that I can hide and show all the markers at once. I find this is much better than as soon as one gets checked, I change what's on the map. Because a lot of times when you have multiple categories going on, if you just hide and show based on one category, now you can't have any of that inclusive kind of like relations between different categories going on and it's going to become a mess very quickly. So I would recommend uh, doing it this way. In jQuery it's very easy. In React it's a little harder because you need to be tracking the state of all the checkboxes. So you're going to have to create some kind of either like a large state object that holds the state of all these checkboxes or a whole bunch of state objects to hold them each individually and change them and check them all every time there is a change. So you can hide and show what's on the map bearing in mind the whole state of the filter list at once. So that's a little complicated, but the core idea is change the interface, then check all of them, and then change what's happening on the map. So let's see that in action here in our step five. So step five, we have, again, the markers and the circles on the map because I want to show you those different exclusive and inclusive. And here, this is the example we originally started with, right? So let's jump in and look at what is changed. So as we come in, we go through, da da da, we're adding the different, you can see here, like I said at the start, we're actually saving the features so that we're able to loop over them later on. This is all the same. And now we have this function that runs after um, a checkbox has been changed and it's called change feature visibility. And that's where I'm gonna do all the, the actual map work. So the way I prefer to do this is I like to check for which toggles are inactive. Uh, you can do it obviously the other way. You could check for which ones are actually active, but I find that this works better in my head to keep the logic understandable. So first I loop over all the checkboxes and push in the IDs, uh, the category IDs of the ones that are now inactive. So I can know, okay, which features or which categories do I need to hide? Now, when it comes to the markers, these are exclusive, which are, is a little simpler than the inclusive. So again, the exclusive means that if any of the categories that that feature has are turned off, then the feature should be hidden. So that's fairly straightforward. All we have to do is check, oh, in the categories that the saved, that, that the marker has, are any of them in also in the inactive toggle array? And if they are, hide the marker and then we either remove the marker or if it's not in the hide marker thing then we add it to the map fairly straightforward uh, um, here you can see i'm referring back to those saved properties that i saved onto the marker this way i don't have to do some kind of complicated like find out which markers i just loop over all the markers that i saved in my array check the properties and figure out if i have to hide it or not okay that's that's how that works now, in terms of the uh, other side, the inclusive side, and I'm doing something a little bit different here as well because this is a map box, so it's with the layers, but we'll, we'll touch on that in a second. Um, in the inclusive way, I have to do it a little bit reversed. I have to make sure that all of the categories of the feature are in the inactive toggles array. So then I loop over all the categories and I make sure that every single one of them is in the uh, inactive toggles array. So it's a little hard to just talk about that and it's probably bumbling your brain a bit. So just look at the code, 
walk through it a bit, that will help you get a handle on it. I always find this a little confusing, and I've done this probably uh, 40 times in my life as a map developer, and still every time I have to kind of stop and think about the logic, because it can be a little bit weird. There's negatives and positives going on. So, okay, in the end, there's these two ways we get exclusive and inclusive. We figure out what we need to hide, and we hide it. The last little bit that I want to talk about is how we do this in the map Libra map box way with sources and layers, because we're not, we don't just have a method like hide the feature or show the feature. Instead, we have a whole layer and we have to pick which specific ones we're going to hide. So what I do is I save all their IDs. And again, IDs here is this ID that I have on the GeoJSON. So each feature has an ID. So I save all these IDs that I'm going to hide into an array, which is done in, with that logic we just talked about. And then I'm going to set a Mapbox expression. Now, if you don't know about Mapbox expressions, it's a whole complicated world. So I'm not going to get into that. You're going to have to do some reading on it. Uh, I'll probably make a little video on Mapbox expressions or a whole course on it at some point. But what I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to say, okay, in the case that this ID of a particular feature uh, in this layer is in the array of IDs I said you should hide, then make its radius zero. Otherwise, leave its radius as it is, which is five by default. So that's what I'm doing. Now, the reason I do radius instead of something like opacity is because radius makes it completely go to nothing, whereas opacity, it's just invisible, which means that if you have some click event or hover event, your users are still gonna have that hover event happen when they hover over the invisible circle. So when you make its radius zero, it goes to zero size. So it's effectively taken off the map. Uh, so I find that's the best way to do something like visibility when it comes to circles. So that's been, uh, that's really it. Uh, I'd say just look over this code and it'll give you a good template for figuring out how to deal with nested categories, exclusive, inclusive uh, in jQuery, in React, in Map Libra, Google Maps, you name it. If you have questions, if you need a follow-up, if there's something that wasn't clear, please leave a comment, let me know, and we'll see you in the next one.